Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to do a beer that is really quite famous but for some reason I've never actually tasted this beer and hence I've never reviewed it for you guys here on the channel and I don't even know how that's happened. So for this one we're going to go to the city in the Czech Republic that's known as Pilsen in Czech and Pilsen in German of course. It's a, Bohemia is a very kind of mixed area and for this one we are going to Pilsenski Prazdroj and we're having a taste of the famous Pilsner Urkel. So this one is the original Pilsner beer, the first Pilsner beer that was ever produced. It was made back in 1842 and it comes in at 4.4% ABV. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one and I actually don't know how it's taken me so long to try this beer. I've seen it around so often and I guess that's maybe just the case. You see a beer that often you think, oh I'll review it later. But I'm definitely looking forward to reviewing this one now. As I've told you before on the channel, I need to make more of an effort when it comes to Czech beers because I really haven't reviewed all that many and I know there's some pretty damn good stuff there and hopefully I can visit at some point in the future so hopefully over the next weeks and months you will start to see some more Czech beer reviews coming up so I hope you enjoy this first one and we will see how it goes from here and I apologise in advance for any bad Czech pronunciation of this in this video I'm just not familiar with the language at all but we'll see how it goes but anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website out the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Plozensky Prazdroy. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. I will make one for all the Czech beers that I've reviewed for you, and hopefully I can add to that over the next little while. And please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you you guys would like to see me review, especially if you're watching from the Czech Republic or Czechia, whatever you're actually calling it these days, and uh, thank you for your support, for, and it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Pozenski Prazdroy then. So this brewery was founded back in 1839 by both German and Czech-speaking citizens of Pilsen in Bohemia in the Czech Republic, although it was part of Germany for quite a significant period of its history. But the brewery, the original brewery was known as Burgerbrauerei in Germany, or to try, or in Czech it was known as the Mishtanske Pivovar, but it translates to town brewery, of course, in English. But the Pilsner Urkel, as I mentioned to you, was the first ever Pilsner beer that was produced, and it was created by Bavarian brewer Josef Grohl, who was hired by the townsfolk from Bavaria, because the Bavarian beers at that time were known for their longer shelf lives, and uh, just the kind of purity and quality, if you like. But the town had been very unhappy with the top fermented local beers. They said it was very poor quality, and it had a really short shelf life, it would spoil after quite a while. And the Pilsner beer was created as a bottom fermented alternative. And bottom fermented beers were of course very popular in Bavaria. And with Bohemia having a similar climate, it was possible that they could save ice from the winter for the fermentation tanks and do the bottom fermented beers all year round. Bottom fermented beers of course do need lower temperatures when it comes to the fermentation stage. I believe it's usually around uh, kind of three or four degrees that they ferment a lot of these beers at. And uh, Grohl actually brewed the first batch of this beer on the 5th of October 1842 and it was ready to drink on the 11th of November when it was first served at the feast of the St Martin Markets. But in 1859 the name Pilsner beer was registered as a brand name at the local tra Chamber of Commerce and Trade and later in 1898 the names Urkel and Prazdroy were registered as trademarks as well and these basically mean in German and Czech respectively. Uh, as primary source or ancient source and this was basically just to highlight the fact that this was the original Pilsner beer that they were producing. In 1889 there was another brewery that opened up and they were producing what would later become the Gambrinus beers. So from 1925 a number of the local Pilsen breweries began to merge and in 1932 the final two in the city were the Mishtansky Pivovar which were producing the Pilsner Urkel and there was also the Pilsenske Asiove Pivovari and these guys were the producers of what would become the Gambrinus beers. But these beer breweries were then merged together and nationalised under the name Pilsenski Pivovari in 1946 when the communist regime began to take hold in the Czech Republic after the Second World War or Czechoslovakia as it was at that time of course. But the national company Pilsenski Pivovari was created in 1964 and this held the rights to the trademarks and dealt with the exports and things like this because this was one of the few beers I believe from, uh, from Eastern Europe that did actually make it out into Western Europe and things like that so it's quite a unique beer in that regard and they 
also uh, in 19 and with the fall of communism in 1989 the company underwent major structural changes and it became a joint stock company in 1992 and the name Pilzhensky Prazdroy which is what they're using today was first used in 1994 in 1999 they became part of SAB Miller South African uh, brewery so they were kind of American and South African owned for a period and since early 2017 they are owned by Asahi from Japan and there has been a bit of protest about that in the city I believe there was a lot of the local kind of Czech citizens were very concerned that, uh, that uh, this brewery was going to be taken to Japan and they were going to start producing the beer over there and things like that which would be a shame of course this is one of the things and I'm a bit surprised actually that the Czech government didn't take this brewery into they didn't nationalize the brewery as the Germans have done with quite a number of their significant breweries it tends to be either the, the federal government owns the breweries or some of the state governments do so it's a bit of a, a shame that the Czech government never actually took this beer into ownership but as long as they keep producing the beer in Pilsen and uh, they don't light up on the quality and things like that then hopefully it should be okay but there's a lot of debate about that in the Czech Republic and you know I'm a foreigner talking about this so you don't want to say too much of course but as long as the beer the beer's good and it remains brewed in the Czech Republic uh, or Czechia or whatever they're calling it these days they have recently changed the name of their country as long as they are still doing that then I think it should be pretty good so yeah I'll just let you have a look on the artwork the, a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up there you can see the very distinctive Pilsner Urkel name this beer apparently is sold um, under I think it's Pilsensky Prazdroy I think they the um, they sell it as in the Czech Republic. So you need to remember that if you go over and order this beer. There you can see the nice kind of symbol on the top of this one, the Pilsen City Crest, I believe, 1842. It does tell you on the back here, in 1842, the Citizens Brewery of Pilsen brewed the world's first golden Pilsner and never stopped. We make it in the same way, in the same place, with 100% of our ingredients from the same farming regions in Czech as always. And it does use Czech Sats Hop, of course, which is uh, which is kind of a staple thing there. And I do like this little old symbol down here on the side. And there you can see the, the red crest there, there you can see the Pilzenski Prazdroy. So I hope my Czech pronunciations haven't been too bad in this video. And there, of course, is the 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 people. How do you say this again? The Pilzenski Prazdroy bottle cap. It's a language I am just not familiar with at all. But with this one, it comes in at 4.4% ABV. And without further ado, then I guess let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. As you can see, a bit of a nice smoky opening there, and we'll get it out into the glass. And I should point out as well, this is a new glass that I have. This is one that I actually bought at the Vine Stefan Brewery. So for this review, you're getting the world's first Pilsner in a glass from the oldest brewery in the world. So I thought that would be kind of quite cool. I don't actually have a Pilsner Urkel glass. That's maybe some... I've not actually seen one before, I don't think. You can get the beer quite readily, but I've not seen the glasses here in Scotland, or even in Sweden, actually, or in Denmark, wherever I've been. I've never actually seen one of the Pilsner Urkel glasses. But as you would expect with this beer, it's poured a lot lovely kind of pale golden straw. It's actually quite a rich kind of syrupy golden colour this one. It looks very nice. The beer's crystal clear. You can see my fingers if I put it behind the glass and there's a solid kind of half finger of a frothy white head on this one. I'm not sure if the Czechs would tend to drink this beer out of a, a kind of taller, more pint glass, as I've seen them do, but um, it's always, these Pilsner beers are always good in these kind of German sort of Stein glasses. But yeah, really nice looking beer. This one, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, it looks really nice and pretty much exactly what you would expect from a Pilsner beer. I would say, though, in terms of colour, it is actually a little bit darker than I've seen some of the, the German Pilsner beers. So I do wonder if the Czech Pilsens are a little bit darker than that. I do remember some of them being a little bit darker, like Krusovice and uh, and things like this. I've not tried any of the Gambrunus beers though, but this one to me it does look a little bit darker than the German Pilsners that I've had before. But yeah, it looks very nice. And let's take a look, closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. That smells really nice. You know, with all the kind of things that are going on with craft beers and stuff like this, you know, the IPAs and uh, and stuff like this, a lot of people forget about the traditional beer styles like the Czech Pilsen, the German Pilsner, you know, the, the Munich Helles, the German Dunkel and things like this. And it's a shame because they are really, uh, in my opinion, they're some of the best traditional beers in the world. I really, really like them. But for this one, you really can smell those kind of distinctive notes. 
of the Czech Sats hop, so you're picking up a good bit of a, flor a nice floral aromaticity from the beer. There's a little bit of a kind of lemon grassy note. It has a wee tiny bit of a herbal quality to it. You can tell with the Czech hops, they do have just this little bit of distinctive herbal quality, but they have quite a pungent sort of uh, floral character to them, and the lemon grassy character in some ways can be quite sharp. It does have a little bit of a sharper lemony citrus to it as well, but you know, it does kind of smell exactly as you would expect. Underneath, you can pick up a little bit of a bready and sort of a uh, biscuity malt from the beer as well. But you know, it's a really, really nice smelling beer. It's not the most pungent of aromas. I mean, compared to IPAs and things like that, it's not got the fruits and all of this kind of thing that it does. But if you like the Pilsner style of beer, then you certainly are going to enjoy the aroma of this one. And it has everything you'd expect. It just has that nice kind of tradition thing. This is one of the things with these beers. They are kind of... They're the sort of beer that you go for because you enjoy that tradition. They're nice, easy drinkers. But this one smells really quite good. It does have a little bit of a stronger aroma than some of the German Pils beers that I've come across before. But without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. As I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma before you try the beer. That's half the experience when it comes to craft beer, whiskey and sake and things like this. But let's try this beer now then. So this one is the Pilsner Urkel, the first Pilsner beer in the world produced back in 1842 from Pilsensky Prastroy in Pilsen Pilsen in the Czech Republic. Slandia. Yeah, you know, in terms of Pilsner beers, you're, I don't think you're going to get much better than that. That's a really nice one. Yeah, you know, this is one of the things, I always comment on, uh, on German beers and things like this and say, one thing that's always amazed me about German brewing is that they can produce things on such a big scale with such quality and you know this one you can tell again they're doing the exact same thing Pilsner Urkelt is produced, this, this beer is produced on a big scale but it's good quality and that's what you want that's a really good beer I have to admit I would maybe go as far as saying that this is probably, it probably is my favourite Pils beer that I've actually tried in terms of the traditional ones. I've tried quite a few German ones and things, but this one to me, it just seems to hit us, it just seems to hit the spot. This is really good. And I'm annoyed at myself for not reviewing this one sooner actually. But yeah, that's a good beer, that's a good Pils beer. So if you want something that's nice and easy drinking, then definitely get yourself one of these. So yeah, <clears throat> as I've always told you with the Pilsner beer, it's not the most complex. It's designed to be a nice kind of easy drinking sort of sessionable beer. The Germans, the Czechs, are all into going to the beer halls and just having a few of these, chilling with their friends and chatting away. And that's exactly what this beer is intended for. So with this one, I would say in the middle of your palate you have this nice kind of, you, you can just feel that sort of bready malt character go right across the middle of your palate. It's actually got a little, a good little bit of graininess to it as well. I can feel there's a little bit of a kind of, a slightly toasted grainy character in the middle of the palate too. Right in the very centre of your palate, that's where you'll get some of the, the very slightly caramelly and kind of biscuity malt characters. But as you go further out towards the hoppy part of your palate, which will come out on the edge of your tongue, you can feel a little bit of that, that kind of slightly toasted, uh, grainy character from the malt base, and I do like that, it gives the beer a little bit of complexity. But yeah, that's really nice, I mean, you could, you could easily just down a few of these beers. It's just so sessionable and so easy going, but it's it's great to have a beer like this that is actually really quite cheap. In comparison, you can get a bottle of this for about a pound or one pound fifty. I think in Sweden you can get these for about twenty five crowns or something like that, which is really cheap for Swedish prices. It's just a very cheap beer that's very high quality, and that's what you want. But yeah. It's really, really nice, and it's actually got a good bit of hoppy bitterness to it as well. You can feel that there's a good amount of hop in here, and that's what you want as well. So, on the hoppy side of things, in the back corners of the palate, you can get a little bit of earthy character, and as you come further forward along the sides of your palate, that's where the floral aromaticity starts to come out, and it's got a little bit of an almost, uh, 
spicy character to it. I've always found that the Czech Sats Hop, they have a little bit of a distinctive herbal quality, but they do give you a little bit of spice too, and you can feel some of that herbal note on the sides of your tongue there as well. But as you go round the very front curve of your palate, you'll get this lighter grassy but mainly lemon grassy note coming off the beer as well I just like how all this whole thing goes together and it is a bit of a novelty to try the first Pilsner in the world for the very first time as I t told you I've never ever tasted this beer before but that's really nice as you progress further into the aftertaste you can feel the grainy characters, the, the, the toasted grainy notes that I was talking about, they become just a little bit sweeter and you can feel some of the caramel on the biscuit just pushing its way out but then that floral aromaticity just sits there. The beer, This beer actually, in terms of the Pilsner beers that I've reviewed for you before, I think this one does have a little bit more bitterness to it than some of the other ones I've come across. But yeah, that nice kind of lemon grassy note, it's got this kind of bitter uh, floral aromaticity on the sides of the tongue and then round the front curve you get this nice lemon grassy note and they're kind of fighting against each other a little bit which is, is really quite interesting and it makes for a very good aftertaste. But just behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get the little oily bubble where I talk about most of the fruity characters start to come out, that's where I always say they come out and for this one, it does have a little bit of a slightly sharper lemony citrus and that'll be the Czech Sats hop again it has a little bit of a sharper lemony character than, uh, than the, the German Noble hops I always find the German Noble hops just give you the lemon grass but they don't quite give you the slightly sharper lemony character that the Sats ones do but yeah, that's really nice, I'm quite disappointed now that I only bought the one bottle you could easily drink quite a lot of this beer. So I need to go to Pilsen at some point and actually try uh, the beers on tap and things. I think they do have a few other beers uh, in their inventory and stuff, so it would be cool to try some of the other ones that they're producing. But this certainly, this is probably my favourite Pilsner beer that I've, I've actually had and I'm disappointed in myself for not uh, reviewing this one or even tasting it sooner. It's just because I saw it so often, but now that I've tasted it, I know what I've been missing out on and I have to say, it's a really good beer. And I do hope that um, they do they do kind of enforce the tradition with this one and just keep it the way it is because with a, a beer like that, um, that is what needs to be done. They need to keep the tradition with it because it is of very, very good quality. Um, in terms of the, the mouthfeel of this one then, as you would expect from a lager beer, it's light bodied. It does have a little bit of crisp carbonation to it. The mouthfeel, uh, it has a little bit of oily character but overall it's quite a wet mouthfeel to this one. There's a good hoppy bitterness in this one. I reckon this is a bit more bitter than a number of the Pilsner beers that I've had before. There's a wee bit of malty sweetness. Like I said, there's a bit of a kind of grainy character as well and there's quite a wee bit of a lemony citrus coming out of this one too but overall it's a really nice beer and I'm glad that I got to review this one for you here on the channel. It's, it's really been very very good and as I said this was the first time I was trying this beer so this is a little bit of a special review actually to try the very first uh, of a beer style the, the very first Pilsner beer uh, that is a pretty special review to film because as I said never tried this one before never tasted it before so I hope you guys really have enjoyed my take of this beer and I definitely will be drinking this one again so yeah I can safely say that this is one of my favourite Pilsner beers probably my favourite actually that I've reviewed for you here on the channel and that's one of the good the great things about the Czech Republic and the Germ uh, Germany and Belgium of course as well, they've got such a rich kind of brewing heritage that they can produce things like this on the big scale and maintain the same levels of quality so long may it continue and uh, that was my take on the Pilsner Urkel from Pilsensky Prajdroy in Czech Republic so yeah, thank you once again for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff do let me know some other Czech beers that I should review for you I really do need to get moving with that over the next little while let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below and let me know what your favourite beers are from this brewery as well and if they do have any special edition beers that I should check out but the Pilsner Ruhrkel is certainly a pretty damn good beer and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again so until the next time it's Slanger just now and I will catch you guys very soon. Cheers!